it's time to stop your conversation, go to your seats, because we're getting ready for worship. But as always, before we worship, we have a few announcements that we want to share with you. First of all, I want to invite those of you who are on the center aisles to look for the red friendship pads. Take that pad, fill out your information, pass it down the aisle. As it comes back to you, try to put some of the names and faces together. So you might try greeting one another by name. And speaking of greeting one another by name, it's your responsibility to go out to find people that you don't know or don't recognize and welcome them to Columbine United Church. Nobody is a stranger here. Everyone is welcome. And people realize that when you go out of the way to welcome them. So that's your responsibility. Names and faces and greeting one another. Also, I want to thank you so much for your generosity. Your giving has remained strong throughout the summer. As we head into August, this is where the real summer slump starts kicking in. We need your faithful giving. Do an automatic withdrawal, send in a check, do a credit card, text to give, go on our website, give through our website. We need your faithful giving throughout the month of August. We have great fall plans in store, but we need faithful giving through August to get us there. So now on to Sam. She has announcements for us about youth and children. Hey everyone, next Sunday is our big back to school Sunday. We're gonna start out in the morning with blessings of the backpacks. So pre-K to college, teachers, bring your backpacks. Let us bless you and the coming school year. We'll do that at our 1030 service and our 830 service. We also have our back to school splash from seven to 10 p.m on that same Sunday, August 14th, to celebrate the end of summer and heading back into class. We will have pizza and we wanna encourage you to bring a dessert. We're gonna be at the Columbine Knowles swimming pool and it's free for you to join us. Invite some friends, it'll be awesome. And now here's Jill. Can you believe it's back to school? How many of you kids are ready for school again? No. How many of you parents are really ready? Yeah! yeah, I can imagine. I think in our house, we're ready. So we're excited to head back for the structure and everything great that um, school brings. This is why we love you teachers and we celebrate you. All right, today, thanks for being here. Great to see you. We love all of you as a Columbine community. And we say hello to those of you who are online as well. Let us continue in worship. Do some singing this morning. Oh yeah! So excited! <laughs> Why don't you stand up with me? We're gonna start with Here to Love. This was um, when I started doing this job seven weeks ago. This was the very first song that I introduced. And one of the things that I realize is if you keep introducing new songs, eventually everybody's like, I don't remember that one. So I'm going to keep bringing them back. Because the fact is some people only go to church once a month. And so you might miss the song that is like the song that's gonna speak to your soul. So listen to what God is saying through this song, you right? All right. All right, let's sing together. We must all unite. We must all unite, for we are one creation. We must join the fight, together we are strong. We must do our best. In every situation, love each other's lives as you would do your own. We must all unite. 
Go ahead and have a seat. For our take a breath a moment, we are just going to pause. And is there an opening prayer? I can see it. There it is. Let us pause. Today is a communion Sunday. Communion Sundays are our first Sunday of the month. And I want you, as we take a breath, to consider this invitation to this table, this invitation to Jesus to say, who says, come to me, all you who are blank, fill in the blank, tired, passionate, ready, despairing, come to me. Take a deep breath and consider what is your, what is the invitation for you this morning? Trust that God meets us in this place with a spirit of life and hope and peace, offering you whatever it is you need today. Would you join your voices with me in our opening prayer? Most gracious God, we greet you once again in this sacred space. We have come because we need to be reminded of your love and your expectations for our living. We are like the vine you planted, watered and protected. We know in our hearts that we need, want, and desire your presence in our lives. So we come in prayer and listen for your word to speak to our hearts and reveal again your desires for us. Amen. We have a guest preacher today, Renee Kosler, and as we have kind of continue just in this moment of take a breath, we have something that she brought to hand out to you. So she and I are going to walk around. About who Renee is, as you know, this uh, earlier in the springtime, we were thinking about people who we, we would want to preach to the congregation because they have an interesting story, they have an interesting faith background. And so Jill and I sat down, we brainstormed a few names. And I said, you know, one of the persons I want to hear from is I want to hear from Renee. Because let me ask you a question. Last week, what were you doing? What were you doing last week? Mowing the grass, fixing dinner, grocery shopping walking the dog. Well, last week, Renee was climbing the Matterhorn. She is, Renee, how old are you? 
No, no. Give it to us. 60 what? 66. She's 66. She was climbing the Matterhorn. She's climbed mountains on almost every continent in the world. She has trekked through Nepal on several occasions. She's gone on solo backpack trips. Ever since she was a young adult, she's been climbing mountain peaks. She leads groups on group mountain climbs. She is a retired professor. She's taught for several years at the name of the university? Longwood University in Virginia. In her retirement, she hasn't retired. She is refired. She is now a business coach. She travels and she leads people on every Friday on expeditions on climbing here in Colorado. So what are y'all doing with your life? That's every time I, uh, I listen to Renee talk, I think to myself, man, I got to get off my backside to get going. Renee, it is great to have you. Welcome to Columbine and welcome to, actually, you're a longtime member of Columbine. <laughs> welcome to the front of Columbine. Thank you. thank you, Steve. And thank you, everyone, and good morning. Um, this is a big deal because I have never given a sermon before. So this is my first rodeo for doing this. And I just want to give a shout out to Steve and, and uh, um, oh my gosh, I just lost my hand. Jill, <laughs> Jill for this opportunity to do this. And um, I have big shoes to fill because I think what they do is, is fabulous. In the spring, Steve me and asked me if I would be willing to do a sermon on one of the parables. Well, having never done a sermon before, I sort of hesitated and I said, sure. And it's hard to say no to Steve anyway. So I said, okay. And then I asked him, well, what parable should I do? And he said, choose a parable that speaks to you. I said, ooh, that's good advice. So I wandered through the parables, and I found myself gravitating toward parables that had something to do with nature and the earth and planting and growing, and such as uh, the sower and um, um, the, the growing seed and salt of the earth. And I decided that I would do my sermon on the parable of the mustard seed. So the title of my presentation, or my sermon, excuse me, is From Small to Big. Big things often have small beginnings. So this is the scripture reading for today, Matthew 13, 31, and 32. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. So before I dive into this scripture reading, I want to talk about the mustard seed. Now, I'm a little embarrassed to say that before I began preparing for this sermon, I knew very little about the mustard seed. In fact, I'd never even seen a mustard seed before. And I'd heard about the parable of the mustard seed over my lifetime. And, um, and I knew about the wild mustard flower along hiking trails, a bright, bright yellow flower. And I know that when I eat my hot dog and hamburger, I put mustard on you know, my hamburger and hot dog. But I knew very little about the mustard seed, so I dove in and learned a little bit more about what the mustard seed provides. And these are some facts about the mustard seed. It's the second most popular spice traded around the world. Who knew? And in fact, much of it is exported from the country of Nepal, which I have visited many times. It's a powerful antioxidant. And so when we think about antioxidants, oftentimes you think about yummy blueberries. Well, now you can throw some mustard seeds in with your blueberries when you're eating them for an added bonus. It's good for hair growth and strength. It helps prevent asthma attacks. It helps relieve congestion. It alleviates pain and swelling and reduces headaches. Wow, 
all in that little tiny mustard seed. How much power it has for our health and the benefits to our overall well-being. I was overwhelmed by learning, and there are many other things that the mustard seed provides. And it's, it's a good example of how something very tiny has so much power and ability to benefit us in the long run. So what does the mustard seed represent in the Bible? And it begins with Jesus. Jesus is really the initial seed. And he oftentimes talks about the mustard seed related to it begins with something small into moving into something larger. And remember, Jesus began with very small, humble beginnings, grew up in a small little town in Israel with peasant parents. He was sort of just another child being born. And then as he matured, he began to spread the mustard seed, his seed. And he did that through his actions and his behaviors and his generosity and the sharing of his love and his wisdom to large crowds that he spoke to and in his, the miracles that he performed. And he also recruited 12 random men called disciples to help spread the seed, help spread the word about faith and love and kindness and generosity. And eventually it becomes this tree. And the tree is really represents the kingdom. And you and I are part of that kingdom, along with Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. So we have this huge umbrella of the kingdom, which is the tree. And the tree, like the bird, flew into the tree to, for protection and for foundation on a pretty solid branch and for protection from the storm, and for safety, and, and for faith, and calm. And that's what the kingdom provides for us, just like the bird does when it fly, flies into the tree. So last fall, I ha was attending a networking meeting every Thursday morning. And one particular Thursday morning, I drove through the Starbucks line, and drove up to the window, and the woman said, the car in front of you just paid for your tea. I thought, oh, wow, I don't know this person. This person paid for my, how generous of them. I just wanted to run, I saw the car leaving. I just wanted to run to the car and say thank you. It really did something to my spirit. It really lightened my day. And so guess what? I paid for the person behind me in line. And then I found myself every Thursday morning on my way to my networking meeting, stopping at Starbucks and doing that to the person of the car behind me. And then at Christmas time, I went to Chicago to visit my home family, and I went to a Starbucks. <laughs> you might sound, it might sound like I go to Starbucks all the time. I don't really. But the Starbucks was not too far from my gate. And uh, I stood in line, ordered my tea, and paid for the woman behind me. And she said thank you. She was, you know, was grateful that I did that. And then as I walked around to the area where they, my tea was being delivered, I see that she paid for the man behind her. Ooh. And then I sat down, and my gate was not too far where I could see the line in the Starbucks line. There were about eight people in line. And I noticed that the man that she paid for paid for the people behind him, which is a mother, I'm assuming, a mother and a father and two children. And then they paid for the person behind them all the way through the line until the line was empty. And I thought to myself, isn't that how it's supposed to be? I began planting a seed, and that seed then began planting to the next person. So it's what I call pay it forward. And I think that's what Jesus' intention was for us to be the seed as well so that we plant the seed for other people. And the examples that we demonstrate and the generosity and the warmth and the giving and the, the love that we pass on to other people the whole intention is to pass it on to other people and paying it for it, but it starts with you, it starts with me. 
So think about those things that you do in your everyday life where you can then pass that on to somebody else. And it becomes, you become the model for how you, Jesus wants us to operate. So the second part of the scripture is from Matthew 17, 20. Because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing is impossible for you. Now, the backstory of this scripture is that Jesus was speaking to a crowd of people, and a man came through the crowd and right to Jesus and said, Jesus, my son suffers from seizures, and he's always falling in the water, and he's always falling in the fire. Can you heal him from these seizures? I've gone to the disciples, and the disciples can't heal him. Jesus, could you heal my son? So he looks at the man, and in moments, he heals his son from the seizures. A few minutes later, the disciples pull him aside, pull Jesus aside, and say, Jesus, how come I couldn't do that? How come we couldn't do that? How come we couldn't take the demon out of the sun? And his response is, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth. If you have faith small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible for you. That scripture brings me tingles. I feel so much power in reading that. Now, literally, can you move a mountain? No, but the idea is that Jesus wants us to step out. Jesus wants us to rely on him. Yes, we can have faith in ourselves, and we can have faith in people around us, but he's saying, pick me, pick me. Have faith in me, because I can give you the abundance and the strength and the power that you need to sense that you can feel as if you could say to a mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And that feels good. That feels like growing confidence in what you're capable of doing. So in your little jars or little containers, what I'd like you to do is take the lid off and I want you to take out one mustard seed and I want you to put it in the palm of your little hand. I'll give you a moment to do that. A little baby mustard seed and put it in the palm of your hand. And in relationship to your hand and how tiny that mustard seed is, it gives you perspective. So what I would like you to do with that little mustard seed is that I, the person sitting next to you or behind you or wherever you are, and I want you to say to the person sitting next to you, all you need is a little bit of faith, as small as this mustard seed in Jesus. Okay? Go ahead and share that with someone else. Beautiful. That's all you need. Now, if you would carefully take your little mustard seed and put it back in the container and put the lid on so that we don't have a whole lot of little ball bearings in the sanctuary. So as I mentioned, Jesus wants us to step out. We can't always be sitting on the sofa. You know, the sofa feels really comfortable and cozy and warm and you know with a little blanket over us on the sofa 
but you can't exercise your faith when you're on the sofa. You have to get up, you have to take a step forward, you have to walk through the door, you have to put your toe in the water, and sometimes it's really scary, and sometimes it's uncomfortable, and sometimes it's hard and challenging, and sometimes it's just uncomfortable to do. But Jesus is saying in the background, pick me, pick me. I got this for you. I want you to rely on me. Jesus has designed us to do big things. He's given us gifts and talents and skills for us to go out and do big things, not big things in comparison to somebody else, but big things for you. And you can't do that when we're sitting on the sofa. And oftentimes, when we're sitting on the sofa, we resort to small thinking, such as, man, I can't do that. I'm not big enough. I'm not bold enough. I'm not courageous enough. I'm not brave enough. I'm not skilled enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. Whatever it is, we begin to have that rhetoric when we're in a comfy, cozy place. But the moment that we step out, and do something that's uncomfortable and unknown and new and challenging and scary, Jesus is saying, I've got you the whole way. Rely on me, and I will take you places you never thought you'd be. And I, I see that as big thinking. You go from small thinking to big thinking, as big as a redwood, strong, vibrant, willing to take on the world. And that's the kind of thinking Jesus wants us to have so that we can go places and we begin to have the seed that he would like us to have. So oftentimes that small thinking says to the big redwood, the small thinking like as small as a mustard seed, to the redwood saying, I want to be like you. I don't want to say I can't, I want to say I can. I don't want to say I'm not, I want to say I am. That's redwood thinking. That's big and strong and vibrant and tall thinking. And when we stand up tall, we feel stronger, right? So, the big message here is a couple of things. One started with Jesus as the seed. Jesus was the seed that was planted in all of us. Over 2,000 years, he continues to plant, even from not even here on earth. And so for us, we're the seed bearers. And think about the people in the Starbucks line. If we can just put forward our seed, our kindness, our warmth, saying a kind word to someone, being generous to someone, loving someone, accepting someone. Remember in that Starbucks line, the person I paid for in, in the rear view mirror, I didn't care if there were one person, I didn't care what color they were, I didn't care how many people were in there, I paid for them anyway. It didn't matter. So Jesus wants us to behave that way and have those kinds of actions as well. So secondly, we become the seed bearers and we have the opportunity to spread those, that kindness and generosity to other people. And lastly, think about the redwood thinking that Jesus really has designed us to have so that we can go places and do big things and make an impact on, the, on people around us and the world around us. So on your little container, I want you to take that home with you, and I want you to put it somewhere where it's visible. You can take it in your purse as you're driving in the car somewhere or taking a vacation somewhere, but use that as a way that will strengthen you and say, ah, that's all I need is a little bit of faith to do something hard. If you're in the midst of about to do something that's scary or difficult or challenging or stressful, then pull out that little container of mustard seed and say, 
That's all I need is that little tiny faith in Jesus to move me from here to there. And it'll give you the confidence, and strength, and the vibrancy that he's intended us to have. Thank you. If you want to know more about Renee, I highly recommend her most recent book, Unflappable Leadership Lessons from Climbing Mountains. I thoroughly enjoyed the book. It's her story about her life, the different mountains she's climbed, and the different lessons that she's learned by climbing the mountains. Thank you so much for being here today. Jill, let's push the communion table forward into the light without tipping the table over. Okay. Yeah, right there. Very good. So in our life group between the two services, we were talking about faith and a kind of uh, our faith and relationship to our kids, and we were talking about communion. And several of the people talked about that they grew up in Catholic churches where you couldn't take communion unless you were Catholic, and they started talking about the fact that some of them grew up in, like, a Missouri City and a Lutheran, unless you had gone to church under that roof, you couldn't take communion unless you were that person. And I thought to myself, man, just think of all the different barriers we put between people and communion. Well, at Columbine, we celebrate an open table. That means literally anybody can come and take communion. In fact, one of the, the things that I'll always remember about my own faith is one time some Muslim visitors came forward and took communion from me. I thought to myself, that is a perfect example of what the kingdom of God is all about, the mustard seed that is small, and yet it flourishes so anybody can come to the table. Or you're someone who has no faith, a lot of faith, where you're questioning or you're doubting or you have all the answers, Presbyterian, Methodist, Congregational, whoever, whatever, do this. If that is kicking around, you're welcome to come to the table of Christ. On the night on which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Now all of you take this, eat this, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after giving thanks for the cup, he said, this is the cup of new life, sealed in my blood. And so drink this cup and remember me. And so each time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we celebrate the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus as a community who follows the humble ways of Jesus. Today, as we prepare for this table, we have a reading that Steve is going to lead us in, and then we will invite you to come forward. Christ invites us to his table. We are so happy to hear his voice. We are excited to share this meal with him. He has prepared a feast for us. The table is laden with good things, the bread of life, the cup of salvation. We are so thankful to receive the Lord's gifts. We are so blessed to enjoy the Lord's presence. All are welcome at this meal. All are loved, and all are invited to receive God's abundance and enjoy it freely. We meet at this table with all of God's children, those born of earth and those born of heaven, and together we sing eternity's praise song, Glory, Glory to, to God, God, the Holy, Holy One. One. Glory, Glory to God in the heavens. Glory to God on the earth. Glory to God now and always for God's, God's love is never ending. ending. Now let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So, the world is constantly changing, so we have yet another adaptation of communion this week for you. 
It's kind of going back to how we've always done it, but we'll invite you to come forward down the center aisle. There will be two stations. All of our wafers are gluten-free, and we will put out your hand, and Steve and I will give you a wafer. And then we have two ushers with us who will be holding the cup, and you can get a cup. There's also baskets for your used cups that you can put them in as you go to light the candle tables. As we center in this moment, friends, remember this invitation of Jesus. Come to me. Come to me. This table is open for all. These are God's gifts for all of God's children. There's no place I'd rather be. So come as you are. Remember that the door is always open. Yes, come as you are. The perfect gift.
don't you sing this with me? Come as you are, so come as you are. I was just checking my phone to see what was next. I had forgotten the order. And then I looked at you (laughs) pointing at me saying, Steve, you're up next. Sorry about the rough transition there. (laughs) Friends, this is the point of the service where we give back to God. Some of you give through online giving. Some of you write a check. Some of you Uh, give a credit card. Some of you might be moved to put something in the offering plate today. Really what I want you to consider about, consider is that what we really need to give is ourselves. That God requires all of our lives, everything about us to be part of an offering. So with that in mind, symbolically we put something in the offering plate. Symbolically we give to the church out of our generosity, but it's a reflection of what God truly requires our very lives. Will the ushers receive this morning offering? Where are you now when darkness seems to win? Where are you now when the world is crumbling?
right, everybody, this is our last song. I'm going to have you stand on your feet with me. We're going to do What the World Needs Now, that old Jackie DeShannon song. I'm sure you guys remember that one. But I have a really quick announcement first. So this week, um, we're having an informational meeting with people who would like to join our choir. If you're one of those people that thinks to yourself, man, I sang in high school, I was pretty good. I wish I could like sing again. I wanna <coughs> get this thing going again. I think, think it's time. If that is you, on Wednesday night at 6.30, right here, that's where I want you, okay? No voice is too small, no voice is too big. There is a voice that could be too off tune, and if you're one of those, do not come, okay? All right, no, just kidding. Okay, so <laughs> let's sing our last song. goodness. I was scrambling on my phone. Hey, a couple of things. First of all, Renee said that she has extra, uh, it's right in there somewhere, of the mustard seed. That if you have an, another, if you have a friend or someone who could benefit from having some mustard seed, see Renee and she has some that she can share with you. Also, this coming week, is the time to sign up for Ollie classes. We have Ollie here uh, in the fall at Columbine United Church on Wednesdays and Thursdays. I'll be teaching an Ollie class this fall. So you can sign up this week. Jill has these photocopies. They're back at the Information Center. There's a couple of them, so sign up for Ollie. You know, it is such a simple message, a mustard seed, a little simple message. But just think about what it unleashes in the world. It unleashes a tide of goodwill. And when you do something little, you have no idea how it's going to change that person's life. And then how that person is going to affect three other people and how those three people are going to affect nine others. And then it extrapolates out from there just because you did one little thing. A cup of coffee at Starbucks holding the door for somebody, saying bless you, giving a compliment, something little, a mustard seed, and it changes the world. 
So that's the challenge. Go and change the world, one person at a time. May God bless you and keep you and shape you and mold you and love you and hold you. This day forth, now and forevermore. Amen. Join us out on the back and on the front steps. We're not here.